people from all over the world come here to experience it. It lies in the energy of the land. There's an energy coming from this place. The whole act of, of art is a spiritual endeavor, so there's always these um, moments where I struggle. At the root of all of that is, is this kind of spiritual connection to me and the materials and just what happens. Sometimes the inspiration itself comes from someplace that I, I can't explain. There's just something in the air, in the skies, the stars, the wind. Georgia O'Keeffe, the consummate American artist, said everything is just different about this place. It drew her in. She knew from the moment she first laid eyes on Santa Fe, it was her country. Many artists call this mystical place home. Whether they are born and bred or just arrived, a certain gravity takes hold of them and doesn't let go. What is it about this place they call the city different? What is it about Santa Fe that distinguishes itself from any other place in the world as embodying that certain power, that certain magic, that certain something? Is it really in the air, the skies, the stars, the people? Even those who have experienced it struggle to define it, but they know it and feel it when they see it. We'll get to sit down with two of Santa Fe's most treasured artists whose deep Native American roots remain immeasurable. They will share with us their stories of trials and triumphs. They will share why they came back to Santa Fe. They will share why they stay. They will share with us their native perspective. Darren Vigil Gray and Tony Abeta are two prominent Santa Fe artists of Native American heritage, deeply respected for their enduring work. Both artists are shaped by different yet equally rich backgrounds steeped in cosmopolitan fare. Darren has traversed the spectrum of social interaction, at times working in utter solitude, other times schmoozing with the who's who of Hollywood. Tony has traveled the world over, studying and working everywhere from France to New York to London to Chicago. He is a citizen of the world, the quintessential peripatetic. Despite their worldly experiences, both Darren and Tony ultimately return to the place where artistic inspiration is brimming and creative energy is overflowing. They both couldn't help but come back to Santa Fe, the place they call home. Santa Fe was always sort of my home place. I mean, I, I decided to come here and uh, set up a studio and lived in Taos for a long time as well. 
it's home. It feels, feels right. It's just a, a really creative and inspiring atmosphere. I was always fascinated with Santa Fe because of the culture, because of the art scene. The art scene has been thriving here for decades and just really wanted to be a part of the, what was going on here. I could see it visually. You know, you come to town, you see odd types of people running around and just a whole different way of life. Santa Fe literally translates to the Holy Faith. It's a fitting name, not only in its historical significance, but in its evocation of the spirituality of the land. This physical and temporal separation from other urban dwellings helps to define Santa Fe as a wholly unique place filled with mystical wonders and inspirations. Darren and Tony both cite the light and the colors of the landscape of Santa Fe to be overwhelmingly inspiring. But they also quickly acknowledge that it's more than just those elements that provide the creative atmosphere. There's something beneath the surface, beneath the physical beauty that beckons to be discovered and harnessed. It's a certain energy that is emitted from the land. It's intangible, intoxicating, inspiring. It's an energy that feeds creativity and fuels passion. It's an energy that is transferred onto any canvas by way of a vessel, a vessel that is the artist. The landscape is the most important part. People from all over the world come here to experience it. And I believe it lies in the energy of the land. There's an energy coming from this place. The landscape here has a uh will of its own every day is, is pretty dramatic. You know, whether there's rainstorms and, and it makes the mountains sort of dark and ominous, but there's that marriage between, you know, the sky and the earth and uh, rain and clouds and the interaction of light on canyons. And you look out on the landscape and there's blues and uh, magentas and, and beautiful olive greens. You see all the colors very vividly there's a crispness in the air, and with that crispness is the, the clarity of light and just all the odd shadows that happen. But that's what I've been trying to do, I think, is um, capture the energy of the land. I get out there and I sort of look at the landscape and I just sort of assess it and I'll shoot some digitals on my phone and then I'll come back to the studio and then I'll just start painting and I'll recollect exact, exact places and times of days and seasons and I'll work over those in, in the studio from not only from memory but referencing even quick sketches or just you know my pictures on the cell phone I'll look at them and say yeah that's that's exactly what I you know wanted to see in terms of the lights the shadows you know the way the mesas kind of fall into these canyons and the rivers just sort of rush forward so there's a lot of, of really amazing uh, activity happening visually just when you get outside of you know, stoplights and malls and, and places here. It's just, it's great. I like to come to my studio with, with images. A lot of times uh, I'll photograph the land and I want to come back to my studio to capture what I felt, basically. So I always thought that the canvas was at one point a, a dead surface. You know, there's nothing on it. It's clear, it's clear slate and you fill it up. And that filling up is just sometimes thousands and thousands of brushstrokes. And each of those brush strokes is a conduit. It's like a transference of energy from the artist to the canvas. And it's that moment of decision making and, and wondering what color is going to dictate the next color. And uh, subconsciously and unconsciously, you seem to channel something. I believe there's a lot of spiritual nature in my work because ultimately it's a gift. To have this creative force is an absolute gift. It comes from a higher power for sure. So I think it just manifests itself all the time. The whole act of, of art is a spiritual endeavor. So there's always these um, moments where I struggle. At the root of all of that is, is this kind of spiritual connection to me and 
the materials and just what happened. I look at it like it's channeling. This stuff comes into me and it kind of flows through me. But sometimes the inspiration itself uh, is, is, um, comes from someplace that I, I can't explain. When the Pueblo Indians first inhabited Santa Fe almost a thousand years ago, they were nourished by the Santa Fe River. But the sustenance provided by the land wasn't all that kept these indigenous dwellers from leaving. Ancient cave paintings in the nearby Bandelier National Park reveal that this energy has always been thriving in Santa Fe, constantly inspiring and drawing people into the landscape. But to understand it, to feel it, to experience it, one must scrape away the surface. It's an energy that cannot be denied. It cannot be ignored. It reveals itself in the color of the landscape and the clarity of the light, yet it cannot be seen. It runs with the river and with the wild, yet it cannot be caught. It cannot be touched. It cannot be held. It cannot be described, defined nor diminished by words. It can only be experienced firsthand and with the true native perspective. The famed British writer D.H. Lawrence once said of Santa Fe, break through the shiny sterilized wrapping and actually touch the country and you will never be the same again. <laughs> 